All right, thank you very much, Frank. I am Wyman. I'm here with Loco. Welcome you guys to the DSL Open 2015 Finals here on Sunday here in the Melkweg in Amsterdam. Loco, how you been? I've been doing great. I'm very excited to be here today. It's going to be some awesome matches that we got lined up. For how are sure. you doing yourself? Yeah, I'm pretty excited. So we're going to have some, a match between Yona and Amtra, and let's take a look at who these players are. Prepared for you yeah, guys we had show, something uh, prepared for you guys. To show these players uh, up to you guys. But that's all good. We're going to be having Numshar versus Yona just starting up very shortly. It's going to be a very sick series. We already actually had those two guys play out yesterday as well. Mm -hmm, indeed. And we all remember how that went. Yeah, uh, Numshar definitely coming up, coming up with, uh, well, you predicted him to do very well, and he did indeed. Like, yeah. I was expecting Yona to, uh, you know, have a more solid state in those finals, but Numshar definitely uh, took the duo in a very decisive victory. Yeah, they ended up playing some uh, some macro games, just straight up solid styles, and it just turned out that Namshar was a little bit stronger in that series. Now, obviously, the winner of this best of three that we will start very shortly is going to be uh, going up against Red in the uh, in the what is it? It's the going to be the quarterfinal? No, it's actually going to be the semifinals it's already. Uh, yeah, yeah, the, yeah. The semifinal is after this. I mean, first, if you look at the brackets, uh, we're going to have two decider matches of the last groups. So the players, the match we're going to be seeing, the final players who come over from that series will play in the semifinals, mm -hmm. and from that point on, it's basically, you know, semifinals, playoffs, and uh, then it's time for the finals. Yeah. So it's going to be a very, very good one, um, right from the get go. Now, if it's up to us, I think we're ready to jump straight into the game. The, lo the lobby is already hosted. Yep. Players are already good to go as well. Players so are ready. Cast is already. I think production is ready as well. <laughs> and we uh, hope production is ready. Yeah, and we're going to have some really good games this w between these guys. Uh, first map is going to be Coda. And, uh, wow, let's get into the game, guys. I'm already hearing the beeping. I love these beeps. Yes. So there we go. All right, here we go. This is Namshar. These guys were all posed up, ready f to go yesterday. We took some cool photos of you guys and... Put them in some graphics for you guys to enjoy while the game is loading up. Yona, once again, front facing the camera, ready to face on into enemy territory. All so right. here we are. Spawning in the bottom right corner of Coda Alley, it is going to be the orange Zerg player, obviously representing the Netherlands right there. It's going to be none other than AT's Gaming, Yona. And his opponent in the top left of Coda, he is the Red Zerg, representing Carnage Esports in Sweden. He is Namshar. So like we mentioned, we already saw those two guys face off yesterday. And in those games, in that best of three, we saw Namshar convincingly take it 2-0. to zero. Now, I'm actually kind of curious. Do you think any of those players has any kind of cheese lined up for this one? Mm, I don't know. I don't really think these players are the type of players to go for cheese in the CVC, especially after they've already uh, gone toe-to-toe -to -toe in a series uh, where, well, one of them had a clear advantage. Like, I, I really don't... S I really think that Jonas' preferred style is to play macro uh -huh. uh, from the looks of it and his relative success so far. I'd say the same for now. Sure. Yeah, definitely. I would be a little bit scared, though, if I was in Jonas' position. I mean, he tried playing straight up a couple of times right now, and it just didn't really work. He tried, obviously, a couple of tricks, basically what he ended up doing in those series. Mm. Um, is go for, like, Roach Burrow and try and get, you know, a couple of free uh, drone kills like that. And he actually ended up knocking down the rocks on one of the maps as well, trying to go for the main base, and it just didn't really work against Numshar. Numshar just being a little bit too solid all around. But we do already see that the hatchery is going to go down right there for Jonah, and so is this for uh, Numshar. Yeah, double 15 hatch for both. I mean, just double 15 hatch in general here. Both players going for a mirror build at this stage of the game, um, which to me really confirms so far that both of them really like to play uh, at least with a standard opener. Uh, mm -hmm. But there's still plenty of room for them to both deviate, you know, they could take some gases, of course the pools will be going down right now. Uh, but it's really, you know, in the early game it's going to come down to the decision like, what, what kind of early units are you going to make? Are you just going to drone up? Are you going to make some early links for harassment to scouting purposes? Mm -hmm. Or are you just going to go straight into roaches and maybe hope you can just uh, kill your opponent straight up with that? <laughs> Yeah, we can actually just cast this game uh, from the production tab so far. I mean, it's the exact mirrored build orders for both players right now. Um, only really deviation that we see is the overload positioning being slightly different. Oh yeah. uh, where Jonas is actually checking the main first, whereas Namshar is checking the natural before checking out the main. So 
no really big deviations so far, and obviously no cheese either. Kind of kind of um, scary actually to open up hatchery first, especially in a best of three series. Obviously, yeah, um, it's relatively common to see some sort of cheese in game number one, but it yeah. looks like both players obviously opting for the macro style so far. So interestingly enough, Yona isn't actually scouting uh, his opponent's natural with the Overlord, mm -hmm. so he, oh, he knows. He, yeah, he should of, of course be able to, de uh, you know. Uh, look at the uh, op his opponent's timing on the buildings, like the spawning pool and the gas cars there, yeah. and deduce that there will be a, a hatchery there. But it's, like you mentioned, it's a lot more common for Xerxes and CVC to first scout the natural and then go into the main. What do you make of this? Um, most of the time you want to try and check out the timing of the gas guys, so you can sort of decide whether or not you can be aggressive with Zerklings. The worst that could happen if your opponent is going for earlier Zerkling speed than you are, even if it's only like 10-15 seconds, is that you have like six Zerklings running around on the map, slow Zerklings that is, and that get picked off really, really easily by speed links. And that could yeah. most of the time already be game over right there. Um, so basically what he's trying to do is figure out the gas timing of his opponent, then try and figure out that way when the Zerkling speed is going to finish it up. Now we do see a follow-up for both players yep. of that Zerkling speed with the Baneling Nest as well. Yeah, both players also have Overlords in position, so they uh, will see everything that moves out of their opponent's base. So definitely uh, lots of opportunity for both to uh, use the defender's advantage. You know, there's, there's really no way uh, Jonah or Namshar could slip uh, units out without being detected, unless of course their opponent is simply not paying any attention. Uh, but both players opening for a bailing nest, but this does not seem to be the aggressive kind of some sorts. Uh, this seems more like a safety bailing nest um, to me. I mean, Namshar placed his in the natural and Yona in the main, so mainly m maybe Yona has more of a goal of actually trying to hide it. Uh -huh. um, but Namshar is actually the one making Zerklings, and Yona is still droning up. Yeah, it's not the biggest of deals, though. It all no. depends on how many Zerklings they want to be committing to, and it looks so far that there's only... You know, I think it's four Zerklings for both players. You have four Zerklings in total right now for both players. So they're just trying to, you know, basically be safe all around. We do see a couple more Zerklings as a follow-up right now for Jonah. So Ooh. actually, wow, 18 on the production tab right there, yeah. as well as the Evo Chamber. So he's likely going to try and at the very least get something done with those. Yeah, he's sending in two Zerklings in the main, so he's going to yeah. get a perfect wow, scout nice. off. He sees, he sees the, the lair. lair. That's, That's huge. Yeah, that's absolutely huge. You're spawning the lair. Uh, didn't pick off a drone, I think, there. But uh, still managed to get a bit of harassment on. Yeah, that one drone uh, survived with 3 HP. Uh, more Zerklings now streaming across the map. And this is something Namshar should be able to spot uh, and react to. But uh, interestingly enough, Yona is actually droning up behind this and taking a third. So this is definitely not some yeah. sort of all-in attack. But he needs to be careful to not overcommit in this uh, in this fight. Because if he loses his, his all of his Zerklings to like a couple Banelings, then a counterattack could be lethal. Yeah, here's the going to be the Zergling Banely micro that we have seen so many times before. It's always going to be a little risky. Like you mentioned, Jona is droning up behind this. So that's by no means an all-in so far. But he's going to have to try at the very Ooh. least you know, maybe force a couple of units out of his opponent, but at the very least, you know, do a little bit of damage. Yeah, he's really trying to force a reaction out yeah, of his opponent, like just trying to get on top of these banelings, maybe pick off a couple drones. Uh, doing a good job with this so far, losing mm -hmm. most of his zerglings though, without all that much uh, result, I have to say. But yeah. he's, he's going to go home. Yeah, he's <laughs> going to go home. And Namshar, he did spot the road room from Namshar, so he has the opportunity oh, to actually make his own. Oh, that could be risky. Ooh, we got a bit of darting back and forth between these two players, mostly with the banelings. Um, Interestingly enough, Yona is still droning up behind us, getting his own road warrant and his third as well. So yeah. he will have an economic advantage, but this is such a, a peculiar position to be. A nice detonation <laughs> there by Yona. Just perfect trading by both players. I mean, yes, Navshaw's third is going to be slightly later, but it's not going to be the biggest of deals. you got to keep in mind that he did go for a lair much sooner than his opponent went for it. Yeah. So that means that the road speed is already going to be in production right now. Yeah, I, I think there's a bit of a timing coming up uh -huh. for Yona, because Namshaw... Uh, you know, he's got 11 roaches in production. Yona just started his first once, and Yona is actually being chased uh, across the map. Uh, he will have a lot of Zerklings, but once the roaches come up, then uh, Zerklings are really not that effective anymore. Yeah, Jonah's economy is rocking right now, though. If you look at the amount of drones that he has at his third base, it is pretty insane. Well, they're darting back and forth with a couple more Zerklings. I don't right. think they're going to miss Micro this too bad, though. Yeah, roaches are out. Yona sees this, mm -hmm. and I think if he's smart, he will use the Zergling advantage that he has to try to dart around these roaches and do as much damage to the economy as possible. Yes. And it's exactly what he's going to do. Namshar is forced to relocate his, ro his roaches to defend his third, and he cannot move out. It all comes down to the third base right now. If he manages to keep that third base up, Jonah, that is, he's going to have a very, very nice economy lead. That yeah. economy lead is going to carry over very soon Whoa. into simply more roaches. Massive economy lead at this point. Yeah. Definitely, certainly, if you look at the, if look at the income, mm -hmm. he's not actually mining any extra gas, so uh, he should be safe and sound. Uh, not a lot of group spread from Jonah, even though Namshar is definitely focusing uh, a lot more on that. Uh, Namshar certainly seems to have gathered his forces and is now once again marching across the map. Uh, his third is a bit exposed, though. So, so these Zerglings uh, almost try to dart by, but they can't 
quite make it yet. All right, Glyol Reconstitution has finished up right now for Namshar. He will be pushing it out across yeah. the map with plus one attack as well. Keep in mind that he has an easy time retreating right now because the roaches won't be catching up. But look at the amount of units right now that are out for Yona. He will have simply plenty to deal with this, I'm assuming. Yeah, he's going to try and maybe wrap around with these circlings and try to catch uh, some of the roaches. But for now, he just has to stay, def stay defensive, I feel. He's getting his own upgrades. Oh, a couple of circlings at the third base oh. actually dealing a whole lot of damage. Yeah, they're killing a lot of drones at this point already. He have three have fallen, but the drones are actually fighting back a lot, but <laughs> still six drone kills. That's a very nice trade for Yona, even because he's taking no damage. Actually, he's kind of chasing Namshar back. Hmm. This is kind of a funny situation right now. Basically, oh. what's happened so far in this game, that they're, trading, like they're basically trading blows back and, back and forth. Uh, the one difference, though, that we do see right now is that Numshar is actually double upgrading. Yeah. And once both players max out, we've seen how that goes yesterday. Um, once those you know, double upgrades kick in, there will be a massive advantage. Yeah, Yona has a bit of an advantage right now in terms of numbers, but he yep. still has to keep up with, uh, with his upgrades. Right now, if his plus one finishes, I'd say that's a good moment for him to go. Uh, he's actually droning up behind you, so I'm not sure what the end game is. But oh, oh here we go. He might be shoving uh, forward. The Zergling's tanking a bit for the Roaches. And Jonas Roach is doing a lot of damage, uh, but fighting uphill may might not be the best decision. He's actually splitting off his yeah. army, going into the flur. What's he going to do? Is he going to go for the I for think the he's hatchery? going for the surround. This is going to be the sandwich right here. Oh, here we go. He's going up the ramp and going to go for the surround with his own Roaches, dealing a lot of damage to Namshar's Roaches. Uh, the upgrades for Namshar still have not kicked in, so this is the ideal timing for Yona. Wow, very well done actually. Sometimes StarCraft is not so much an upgrade game, but it's all about the numbers. And you can see the amount of supply that Jonah has right now oh, compared wow. to Namjur. Very, very nice game so far. Oh, and he's going to catch these drones as well. They have nowhere to run, it seems. Maybe they can escape the base, oh, but still... He's oh, he's the dancing the roaches. <laughs> oh my god. A little bit sure. BM. <laughs> pretty, uh, pretty risky, but still GG. Yeah. Well played. Jonah takes the first game. <laughs> very, very cheeky roach dance right there. He knew what was going on right there. Yeah, but still, you know, when you're up... <laughs> Look at that smile. He's happy about that one. He's like, yeah, I got this. That was <laughs> cheeky uh, in, by every single definition of the word. I mean, let's keep in mind here that there was definitely a timing. If he had missed that timing, <laughs> yeah. he, this could have been a whole different situation here. So nice game sense here by Yona, uh, you know, attacking at the exact perfect moment where he had to and dealing uh, just critical damage. Yeah, actually very, very well played right there. Uh, obviously got to feel pretty good for him as well, knowing that he's going to be up... Um, you know, at least in a macro game right here. Yeah. Obviously losing two macro games yesterday could do, you know, at least some, some damage to your mental state and he could not feel very confident. Yeah. Uh, overall, but winning this yeah. one is good. Overall, I felt he played a lot more solid and a lot more stable mm -hmm. and then in the preview series where he committed to a couple of attacks where there really was no need to. And in this yes. game, he was so patient where he just only took fights, only took trades and he just focused on his micro in the early mm -hmm. game and didn't overcommit to anything. And it really worked out for him. Yeah, very well played. Very clean victory right there. And um, yeah, that, that must actually be a nice little confidence boost right there. Yeah. Obviously, he did commit quite heavily into not getting the upgrades and choosing instead to go for more roaches, which will give him, you know, just the sheer numbers like there to, to finish off the game. So very well played. Um, game number two, I don't know exactly what map is going to be like, but... Yeah, they, they took a couple of vetoes. I still have them here. Of course, they vetoed Infernal Pools, which is not a very uh, tough veto uh, to make. Mm -hmm. uh, Yona also vetoed Echo and Cactus Valley. Okay. Uh, Namshar vetoed Iron Fortress. So I think that leaves uh, Funny Research Station? Something like that. Yeah, that seems to be a more common map right now, especially together with Echo. That seems yeah. to be like the three maps that people really like playing on. Either way, this does mean that Jonah is going to be 1-0 up in a best of three series. And that's obviously a nice advantage to have because this means that he does have the option to cheese. Or yeah. at least like put on some... You know, maybe try and get a quick victory. He could be going for something like ten pool, knowing that yeah. Namshar has been uh, opening up hatchery first every single game. Yeah. Let's keep in mind though that if uh, the, the next map is actually Vani Research Station, the distance between the two bases is significant, and it's also easier to go for a 15 hatch there because you have an in-base expansion. So I don't think either player will be very inclined to go for some sort of cheese, but there's still a lot of options. You know, you could go for something like a night display in the mid game. Technically not a cheese, of course, but there's still a lot of options you have. Yeah, so we'll see We'll see exactly what's going to happen. He's very happy about how it's going, though. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure who he's talking to, but uh, he seems pretty... Uh, <laughs> the confidence is real. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, Namshar, on the other hand, not looking as confident right now. Yes, they're still waiting for uh, the map to be hosted at this point, and uh, I'm kind of curious as to which one it's actually going to be, because there is uh, a lot of options. I uh, just want to give a quick shout-out to our sponsor who we have here. We have Cooler Master, we have MSI, and what else do we have, Loco? Well, you put me on a spot right there. Oh, I'm so we sorry. We got HyperX as well. Yes, we have HyperX. <laughs> <laughs> There's one more. 
Yeah, follow esports. There we go. Exactly. I forgot the name right there. <laughs> yeah, check them out, guys. De definitely a big thanks to Cooler Master, HyperX, and MSI for providing us with the awesome gear that we uh, that we have here and that we use at this tournament in order to allow our players to play the awesome games we have uh, to pl to broadcast all these games. And uh, well, of course, we have MSI gear in front of us as well for uh, plenty of options. Yeah, apparently we are actually taking a short break right now yeah. because we got some sound problems. Uh, so I'm assuming we're going to be jumping into a commercial break right here. At least I'm thinking we are. Uh, that would make the most sense. Yeah. So guys, uh, s just stick with us. Uh, we see that Jonah is uh, going to take a short break as well, so we should be fine. So uh, pretty soon we should be going to a commercial break. As a viewer, why? So why would you be excited? Well, it's because you're gonna see people from your your hometown, basically, right? Or your your own country play. Uh, you get to see not only their games, which you usually see, but also their faces. So come and watch. The best thing that can happen for us as the Dark Starter League is for players to get fans. Making things is in our DNA. For 23 years, we've brought together some of the brightest minds in the computer industry to create and build new technologies and products that push the limits of PC building. But now, Cooler Master is looking beyond DIY, beyond just doing it yourself, to a more ambitious future where we're driven by the desire to reinvent the ways PCs are designed, made, bought, and used. We spent the last few years constructing our muse, our blueprint for technology and the next generation of computing. And the master concept is the first step. We collaborated with a team of world-class case modders and power users to combine our conception of the ultimate modular case with their expertise and vision. After brainstorming, hands-on testing, and countless feedback sessions, the master concept was born with it, a new direction for Cooler Master's future products. What I am surprised with from day one, coming into, a, I don't mean to be disrespectful, but a Taiwan case company, normally you'd think really rigid, you know, we've done this certain way for 20 years. You've blown me out of the water. I'm just, I'm in shock of what I've seen, and it's great. This needs to happen. Our master concept is the result of a vision that every person's PC can be unique. And this is a first step in a fundamental reimagining of our relationship with fans and supporters. We're embracing the maker spirit, and we want to reach out to the community to provide them the tools they need to fully express themselves, to give free reign to their creativity. 
We've progressed to a point where I think people can, you know, really bring in their own style to it and add value, not just have, you know, a beautiful case, have it be a little more free form, which is why I'm really excited about having a modular level type design. It's just a dream for me to be working with these guys. It's a new way of thinking in the computer world. The community had spoken. We listened. And the Mastercase represents the vanguard of our response. Inspired by the Master Concept's revolutionary approach to working with the community, it pioneers a new wave of case technology. Fundamental to this is our unique freeform modular system. In the master case, Freeform gives you absolute control over how your case looks and functions, opening up new options to create multiple setups like home servers, professional workstations, and even gaming rigs with advanced water cooling and extra long graphics cards. From cases to power, cooling and peripherals, our products will embrace the concept of offering greater choice and potential for self-expression. We want to give you the flexibility to make it yours.
Welcome back to the Dutch StarCraft League here in Amsterdam. We are in the middle of a series right now, a best of three between Numshar and Jonah. Players are actually already in the lobby, so if it's up to me, I think we're ready to go. Definitely, let's get into the game and uh, see if uh, Numshar can fight his way back in this series and still make sure that he can get to into the semi-finals of the Dutch StarCraft League Open 2015 finals here. Yeah, we just saw a very convincing victory, 1-0 in favor currently. Um, for Jonah, very, very cool. And obviously yesterday, those two players played as well. Yeah. And Numshar ended up winning that series 2-0. So pretty interesting little mind game that we got going on as well. Both players opting to go for, um, you know, a lot more macro-focused. And um, yeah, they're really, they haven't done any kind of cheese at all yet. Yeah, definitely not what, what uh, a lot of people were expecting in the series because of how solid Numshar played. But uh, maybe he went a bit little, too, little too ham last night. I don't know, man. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I, uh, I got to talk to Jonah a little bit before the game started, uh -huh. uh, and uh, he seemed to be ready to go. He didn't seem super confident, or he didn't seem like he uh, would absolutely dominate the games. But, you know, if you have to believe that first game, clean victory, just trade up macro, and just simply outplaying Numshar. Yeah. All right. Well, let's introduce these players here. We have in the bottom of Vani Research Station, we have the Orange Zerg representing Team A2 Master. He is Jonah. Ooh. And on the top side of Vani Research Station, it's going to be the Red Zerg, representing Carnage Esports, is going to be none other than Namshar. I would actually give that advantage oh. right there for the crowds to Namshar right there. Wow. <laughs> so as you might have noticed, uh, at this point, Namshar has definitely uh, attracted a bit of a following here. Yeah, and look at the production tab right there. Uh, yeah. Hey we see a very early spawning pool right now by Jonah, and this is exactly like I was predicting right there. Um, we basically see a 1-0 advantage for him right now. He knows that his opponent has been opening up with a hatchery first every single game that they played. He yeah. is fully aware of the strategies that Namsha likes to play, and he is going to try and, at the very least, go for a little bit of cheese right here. We see a relatively early spawning pool, uh, followed up by the extractor as well. He's going to squeeze out a whole bunch of zerklings right now. Likely going to follow back to drones in a little bit, but we'll see. He's going to... But yeah, he's actually going to end up putting three drones in gas as well. Wow, so Jonah will definitely be committed to something yeah. here. Six circlings on the way. But on the other side of the map, we have Namshar actually who <laughs> went oh, for the Oh, he goes oh. for the hatch. He goes for the hatch, but he already had a oh spawning pool. Oh, yeah, already had a spawning pool. Okay, yeah, that's my bad. Yeah, so this will actually uh, be something that he can definitely defend if he starts his queen, you know, as soon as possible. And gets Ooh, a couple we of see the bailing out. nest. We see the bailing nest yeah. right here. And look at Jonah directing his zerglings around the potential vision field of the Overlord that is com oh, definitely coming. Oh, he's there's actually another. moving it in an unorthodox position, oh, though. Oh, and he's going to maybe dodge the yeah, second no Overlord. No, no, is not sure going to see this. He is going to notice this right now. He's fully aware of what is happening. He knows that he needs to defend this. And perfect follow-up right now by Namshar. Going for the spawning pool first, knowing that this was an option for his opponent. And what we're going to see from Jonah is a whole lot of banelings and as many zerglings as he can. Oh, here come the first zerglings into the mineral line, oh but the first circlings from Namshar are also already spawning, so he's definitely you know, not looking all that bad, and the Queen is also almost finished. Ooh, oh, that Tim City right there with the spawning pool. He is prepared for these scenarios. He is Namshar, he knows what's up. Yeah, definitely really good defensive so far by Namshar, but still, uh, there's still Banelings underway here for Yona, the first two morphing in. Uh, but this Queen is going to help so much, you know, this, she's got so much HP, uh, the range attack is going to help so much against picking off Banelings, basically putting some sort of timer on them. Ooh. Uh, only just now seeing the first spine crawler go down, actually, and that is a little bit later than we would usually see it. Yeah. Namshar probably expecting his opponent to go maybe for a couple zerklings, but he's committed. As you can see, there's more and more zerklings on the production tab. Oh, he's gonna go wrap around oh, the rosy. Oh, well, actually, we go. moving bailings there right in, the in between the mill. Woo! We'll be able to pick up that spine crawler. That's used, but here the bailings go into oh. the front. Oh, he picks off so much stuff here from Namshar, but Jonah is currently still at a supply oh, deficit. Two more there's, there's two more Bailings. Two more Bailings currently being chased down by the Queen. Actually going to make their way into the natural, but there's nothing really there. Uh, oh. Namshar has so many low HP drones. Whoa, what? He actually accidentally ran them into the hatch. Whoa, I can't believe he did that. Well, that's really something that can turn the tide around at this yeah. stage. Uh, Jonah is actually still committing to this attack. Adding on more, he's finally adding drones, but he's making more bane links. Uh, but all the drones from Namshar are regenerating, so this, it's not like he could just run a few units in yeah. and kill them all like one by one very easily. I don't think he really did enough damage there. He is gonna, you know, 
follow it up with more and more units, but there's double queens right now on the ramp. And if you take a quick look at the amount of workers that are active right now, Nonshore does still have the advantage. Yeah, he does definitely have the advantage. Uh, and more importantly, he has a hatchery, so his production capabilities are also yes. uh, a lot bigger than Jonas. He doesn't need the queens. <laughs> no, no, <not> at <laughs> Just all. gonna sit there. He hasn't a transfuse ready as well, so I don't think Jonas is gonna be able to break this at all. And we actually see a drone follow up right now as well. Now, very quickly, we will see that, that income spike go in favor of Nonshore. He's just producing way, way more right now. We do see a, a hatchery right now as a follow-up for Jonah as well. So he's definitely trying to transition out of this, but it's not in his favor as of right now. Yeah, CVC being a mirror matchup means that every worker really counts in the income. Mm -hmm. And every worker you have more means you have more income, which allows you to build more workers. And really, economic advantages can escalate really quickly. So I'm really worried for Jonah if he's really intending to play this uh, you know, to the long A, or is he maybe just going to follow this up with another all-in? Maybe hope that Namshar is actually droning yeah. up too heavily? Interesting mm. scenario right now. Technically speaking, if both players play out this one perfectly, Namshar is going to just simply be a or thing, you know, he's just going to simply have more units. Yeah. However, uh, Jonah obviously may decide to actually just drone as greedily as possible and try and get something uh, something out of that. Now we've seen Namshar go for the spine crawler, so he's definitely not feeling super safe just yet. He knows exactly what's going on, yeah. uh, but yet he, he, he feels a little bit threatened. We also see the Evo Chamber and the Roach Warren go down for him right now as well, whereas Jonah, he's just making more and more drones. It's definitely for sure though is that Namshar is aware of the hatchery that just finished for uh, is just about to finish for Jonah. There's an overlord there in mm -hmm. the back of the natural uh, spotting it. So Namshar by all means is really in a in a secure position. Um, what happened to his first spine crawler though? I'm, I think it got may have gotten killed in the first fight. He actually picked it off with Zerklings. He split uh -huh. up the Zerklings and the Banelings beautifully and it got rid of that. So it was a very, very nice aggression. Um, if Namshar would have gone for a hatchery first, like he did in every other game, this would have been a guaranteed victory right now. Mm. So it's a, it's, a, it's a risk that Jonah took early on, and it ended up not paying off in this game. He's not out of this one yet, though, and it's actually a relatively good follow-up. Oftentimes you see players, you know, go for this exact same aggression and get absolutely nothing out of it, and at the very least he got a couple of drones. Now sure seems to be feeling really safe at this stage. You know, he's getting a lair, he's getting a third hatch. He's focusing just on Roach upgrades and tech right now. Uh, I anticipate Roach speed coming from him. And the, the moment is Roach speed and plus one attack hatch, he might just you know, throw an attack Jonas way that could be lethal. Because if you look at Ooh, Jonas' yeah. tech, he's also going for the third, but he doesn't have as much drones to back it up. Let, you know, never mind the standing army. Yeah. And he's getting Zergling speed, but Zerglings against Roaches is usually not a very fair fight. Yeah, so here's the thing. Right now we see Jonah committing very heavily into the Zergling speed right here, and he's actually only just now putting drones back into it. If he decides to commit into Zerglings, that plus one attack, of his opponent is going to be huge. Normally, Roaches take three shots to kill his Zerkling. With that plus one attack, when the Zerklings have zero armor, it only takes two. So that's a massive advantage that he can gain right now if he indeed goes for that timing attack with the Roach speed and with the plus one attack. I'm sure now scouting his opponent's base with the Overseer. We'll see that there is no Roach Warren anywhere to be found. And for him, that's very mm. good news. Uh, in response, though, uh, Jonah has actually made his own Roach Warren. But now yeah. he has a Zerkling speed attack that he uh, cannot really do anything with. Uh, and he will, well, since the fact that he doesn't have a layer of his own, uh, still cool. will be behind in upgrades. He's scouting around a bit with his own links, and he will see that uh, Namshar has just decided to take his own third. This is actually kind of interesting, though. Supply-wise, obviously, we see an advantage, or an advantage right now for Namshar, but drone-wise, it's actually relatively even right now. This is mm -hmm. the best scenario that Jonah could have hoped for. Obviously, this timing push is happening, though. Yeah. He is going to move out with the roaches that he has. I mean, there's nothing that's really going to catch him off guard when he has the glio reconstitution, which is roach speed done. Um, so he's going to, at the very least, try and get something out of this. But the very aggressive droning right here by Jonah does put him back into this, as long as he manages to hold this aggression. Uh, Jonah keeps trying to dart in with Link and try and do some damage. It's now picking up a couple of drones. Uh, will this prompt a response from Namshar? No, Namshar actually still Ooh. moving down with, towards the third with his own uh, roaches and finally the last of the links uh, in the third of uh, Namshar get killed. Here come the roaches though and they are targeting down the queen. Ooh, roaches from Yona come in to intercept but the question is are there enough here? I'm not, I don't think so and yeah he's gonna have to pull some of his own drones here to fight. Yeah, both of the players are trying to reinforce this right now with more and more roaches. In the meantime though, Massive amount of drones right there for Jonah. He oh. decided to go for 11. I don't think he is reading this properly at all because his opponent is going to continue this aggression, at least for now. Yeah, he did not see any roaches being added on for Namshar the moment he was engaging. And now oh. he has to deal with a massive onslaught of roaches from Namshar that is currently streaming across the map. His own drones fighting, something that you definitely never want to have in his DVC. 40 supply difference already from Namshar. I'm not sure if Jonah can hold on here. Very nice focus firing right here. And yeah, yeah he there says we go. Well, well played. played. GG. Tying up the series actually in one-to-one -one favor. Yeah.
Well, to be fair, Jonah took a risk. He, he decided to go for, yeah, a little bit of a gamble right there and try and get that early victory out. Um, and honestly, in like probably 75% of the games versus Nomshare, that would have worked. Yeah. Um, so, you know, it's a calculated risk. He decided to go for it. It didn't end up paying off in this time um, or in this game. And they're going to have to play the decider match right now and basically decide who is going to move on to the semifinals yeah. and play against Red. Yeah, it's all going to come down to this game. <laughs> Yeah, shout out to the crowd here. It's uh, it's fleshed out quite a bit, as some of you might have noticed. Definitely. And uh, yeah, some of the people are very cheery, cheering for Red. Some are cheering for Jonas. Some are cheering for Namshar. And uh, so thanks to you guys for showing up. I'm very excited about this series, and I hope you guys are just as excited as we are. Definitely. So we're already entering the lobby. Last map is actually going to be Expedition Lost, and we see some crazy games on oh. this on this map. Yeah. There's obviously a, a gold base on this one, so we'll see if it comes into play. But we'll go over that in just a second. Uh, John actually saying, uh, I guess I'm a little bit too predictable. Um, and I guess, yeah, it was sort of Numshar reading him like a book. He got really hard countered, you know. Uh, 15 pull against n a 10 pull is, uh, or I think it was 10 pull, is usually a very good counter, especially on the map like that where defender's advantage is just so massive. Yes. Exactly. Uh, I mean, that's not. F if this was a different map, then this build from Yona could have had a very different outcome because it was not that easy for, uh, you know, for Namshar to, to ha hold the ramp on a different map. You know, he could just, he'd, all he had to do was park two queens that there, and there wasn't really anything Yona could do in, f in terms of a follow-up, and he was forced into a macro game with a massive disadvantage. Definitely, definitely. So, last game of this series, yeah. we are ready, so we can jump straight into it. Um, I'm assuming that this is just going to be a super straight-up macro game. Yeah. I don't think both players really want to be taking a risk. Obviously, if they lose this game, they will be out of the tournament. Yeah, I, I still really feel that these players, uh, uh, as we get into this game right now, uh, are definitely feeling more like a macro type uh, type of style. Is yeah. something that suits them better. Uh, it's also the games you know that they won were also all macro style games. So at least Jonas' game that he won was more macro style. So speaking for him, I would definitely assume he would be playing macro style in this game. Oh, there we have Namshar, big smile, <laughs> looking ready to face Red perhaps in the next series. Jonah, is he is he just as ready? He's oh. You know, he, he seems confident enough yeah. right there. <laughs> he looks very contrasty. Yeah. All right, guys. We have spawned on Expedition Lost. It is going to be the orange Zerg player spawning for um, AT Gaming right here in the bottom left corner is going to be none other than Jonah. <laughs> very focused right there. Mm -hmm. And his opponent in the top right. He is the red Zerg representing Carnage Esports. He is Namshar. I, I, st I still got to hand it right here for to Namshar. He seems a little bit more of a crowd favorite right here. Yeah, I'm not sure why, <laughs> but he's definitely, uh, maybe he's got the foreign factor work working the for the him. The foreign factor, yeah. He's from Sweden, if I'm not mistaken, right? Exactly. Yeah. So he actually flew all the way over here in mm -hmm. order to attend this tournament. It's yeah. dedication. Yeah, so most of the players are actually staying over at uh, my girlfriend's Astrid place. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's, uh, it's a busy, uh, busy place right now, a lot <laughs> busier than it used to be. And uh, it's a lot of fun. It's very cozy. Very cozy. All the players uh, sleeping on sli sleeping bags and mattresses <laughs> in the living room. <laughs> so, uh, I'm sure as well. Or uh, yeah, he's cool. there too. Cool. So, Along did you get a chance to talk to him about the previous series that he played against uh, against Jonah at all? Or uh, not really. The, m the moment the tournament ended, it was all uh, all pleasure, no business. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. All right. So we see Numshore once again opening up very safely right here, going for the spawning pool first, mm -hmm. making sure that you know that kind of cheese, even though it doesn't seem to be Jonah's style, isn't happening. And Jonah actually uh, going for the hatchery first, taking a little bit of a gamble. But honestly, he's not seen cheese a single time from Numshore, yeah. so he's not assuming it's going to happen right yeah, now. Yeah, I also think this is the correct decision for Jonah to make, uh, even mostly because it suits his own style the most. You know, going for that 15 hatch is just the way mm -hmm. he likes his timings. He likes to play. And let's be honest, Nemshar is not going to do anything crazy after this just yet. He's yes. currently following this up as well with, uh, you know, with a, with another hatchery. So, a bit of a slight, ever so slight lead here for Yona in the economic factor. Oh, but he's adding on a quick, pretty quick gas, I think. So this will look like something like a zirking speed. Yep, definitely. So he's he's going to go for at least some zirking speed. Very very safe play. We haven't seen any kind of gasless variations. Um, and this tournament at all, actually. It's relatively common in Zerg versus Zerg. Uh, but so far, we actually don't see a gas geyser net f yet for Numshar. Mm -hmm. And usually, if you open up with a spawning pool into a hatchery, you will get that gas going right when the spawning pool finishes, or maybe slightly later than yeah. that. 
He is getting to Zerkling, so at a, a relatively early stage in the game. Like, oh, there we go. He's kind of started right now, so a little bit later. Mm. He's going to just play it safe that way. Yeah. So these two Zerklings are going to be scouting out on the map. They're going to be spotting what uh, what Jonas is exactly up to. Mm -hmm. They should be able to get into the base before a Queen pops, I think. It's always a bit of a peculiar, time, <laughs> peculiar timing. Fortunately for him, he sees that there are no gold bases taken, though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so if we talk a little bit about the map, because, you know, most of this game is going to be pretty straightforward. Um, if you have a look at the middle part of the map right now, there is actually a couple of gold bases that can be taken by the players. And sometimes you see this one Ooh. instead of the more obvious third base location. Sometimes you see players trying Ooh, to spread drone. creep over there. Oh, he's going to oh. lose a drone. No, he more it just in time. <laughs> Very well done. But sometimes we see the third base uh, being taken in the middle side of the map. Obviously a risk, but, you know, it's a risk-reward sort of situation, and it can definitely pay off. Yeah. Oh, um, very nice uh, work there by Yona, saving the drone at the last possible second by morphing it into a Vespin Geyser. Um, and, yeah, so the Zerglings from uh, from Lampshire didn't really achieve all that much. Looking at the vision, they did get a good scout off, though, and they saw yeah. the gas and the Zergling speed on their way. Uh, and it's actually followed up with a bailing nest here from, uh, from Yona. Oh, he cancels it. Very interesting. Right now he scouted around, he managed to click right there on Numshar's gas geyser and he saw obviously that there's only two drones in it instead of the normal three. Actually we see the queen right now attacking the hatchery right there, okay. It does yeah. end up uh, stopping that. But he knows right now that he doesn't have to worry about any kind of aggression and Numshar, wow. Oh, I thought he was going for a third base right there already, but no, instead he's going to go oh. for the approach one. Right <laughs> Th that drone had massive aspirations. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it was, it was it was like moving forward, but you know he sent it back after all. All right. So I really want to know what Jonas' uh, s you know general plan is here. He's getting an evolution chamber. He's getting more drones. He's getting his own third, and this has been scouted by Namshar. So this is a position for Namshar right. where he can choose to actually go. Oh, Jonas doesn't send his zerglings up the ramp, so he doesn't. Uh, yeah, you shouldn't know there though that there is a, a roach warren yet on the construction for the for Namshar, and that's actually massive because really, if Jonas wants to hold on to this third, he needs a roach warren of his own. Beautiful read so far, though, by Jonah. Getting that scout off in the main was huge. He decided to basically just cancel the Roach Warrant, or the, the Bailing Nest, rather, straight up and go for the third base. He knew that there was not going to be an option for his opponent to have Zerkling speed yet. And instead, you know, he's going to be able to make his own Zerklings right now, which do have Zerkling speed, and potentially cancel his opponent's third base. Mm, I'm still worried for Jonah, though. There's a lot of roaches now being made for Namshar. He has spotted the Zerklings that are heading towards his base, and he is making the roaches, but still, those roaches have to pop. They have oh. to walk all the way to the other side of the base. A council of the third base would be huge right yeah. now. We see Jonah oh. likely going to... Yeah, he's just going to try and get a council right yeah, now. Yeah, the Zerklings are already there. They are being spotted, and they are making a beeline right now for the third base. Yeah, uh, it's too late. That third base is going to go down. Yeah, there's too many Zerklings here for uh, Namshar to actually defend, so they will definitely be in massive wow. economic advantage so far for Jonah. But the question is, will he be able to hold on to it? Because Roaches, he doesn't have a Roach Warren finish yet, so he needs to hold on against mm. this counter-attack. The, the economic advantage is right now going to be in Jonah's favor, and that means that as long as he manages to hold the timing attack that's going to come, he will simply be able to produce more Roaches. But it's all going to be about that plus one attack that you were talking about previously as well. Yeah, plus one attack is uh, al almost completing oh, here for... He forgot, he forgot Glyar Reconstitution. Yeah, I was going to say that too. He has forgotten to, uh, Roach Speed Wow, so far. getting the Council once more. Wow. Really nice moves here by Yona, um, but still, he okay, finally Yona's adding roaches of his own, but he doesn't wow. have a lair. Uh, so, yeah, upgrade-wise, he should be somewhat falling behind, but the fact that, <laughs> that Namshar is forgetting his own roach speed is massive. This is a very nice situation for Jona to be in right now. Normally, you would see a plus one attack with roach speed, which he cannot really, you know, he cannot really out-micro that with slow roaches. However, slow roaches versus slow roaches, he's going to do that all day long. Yeah. Finishing up the plus one armor right now as well. Likely going to follow it up with the plus, uh, plus one missile as well. But he's going to be having a massive advantage right now. If you take a look at the amount of income that both players are taking right now, or oh, both you're players are getting, it's huge. He will be able to simply just wake way, way, way more roaches. I, I was so worried for Yona, and I still kind of am because oh, of the in. Oh man, so many Zerglings now in the, natu in the main of Namshar. Are they going to focus the Queen down first? No, they're going to fight some drones. He doesn't uh, care. As long as he's losing mining time, he's already happy. Yeah, definitely. He's not going to focus the Queen down at all. He just wants to interrupt the mining of these drones and further his own economic advantage. But let's oh, keep in man. mind... Yeah. That's, a, that's a very uncharacteristic move right there by Namshar, pushing all of the roaches back into the main oh base. Wow. That could have spelled disaster for that third base once more. I really think Yona is getting inside Namshar's head at this point. Yeah, Cancelling sure. the third, doing oh. run like that. 
that's really something that works so well against uh, you know a player like Lamchar. Lamchar actually breaking his own rocks. I'm not sure what he's trying to accomplish. Okay, he's trying he's to okay. delay. He's going for the for the back rocks right now. In the meantime, he actually produced 14 ro or 14 drones behind that. Yeah, but look at the upgrades. Still no plus one for Yona. Ooh, that's a he big doesn't thing. have road speed. Really, he might have a numbers advantage, but that's just about it. And of course, the economic advantage. <laughs> Let's not forget <laughs> about that. Yeah, he will be able to simply just produce a lot more stuff right now, but. It's safe to say, once these players max out and they manage to go up into, you know, 200-200 road fights, the advantage is definitely going to be in Numshar's favor because he's simply, he simply has better upgraded roaches. Yeah, and the lair is only just now finishing up for Yona. I really wonder if he's forgotten that. Like, he safely managed to transition into the mid game, but he's got to be so careful. And right now he's, t he's taking back his roaches to his base, so he's giving up the, uh, you know, the initiative that he had. He could have still run like a couple zerglings into his opponent's third while poking away at the, you know, at the main, at the back rocks, try to try and annoy and distract Namshar, but he's not doing that either. And he now he's just going to sort of try to ca play the catch-up game. Interesting scenario right now. While we do still see the supply advantages going into Jonas, it is sort of on a timer. The upgrades are super oh important. Oh my god. Look at the natural of Yona. There's actually an evolution chamber that has been contaminated by an wow. overseer. You don't see that like ever. It's 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 yeah, it's a little bit of a cute move. I mean if you make the overseer, you may as well try and delay that a little bit. And it actually has a pretty big impact. And there's double evolution chamber right now for Namshar. He's getting such a huge upgrade advantage and even more important, pneumatized carapace for his overlords. He's gonna get overlord speed and will he f follow this up with drops, you think? Ooh, that would be very uncommon. I mean, the thing is, why why would you need drops, you know? Like, <laughs> what, what, what does he really want to do with drops? He could go for the main base, but if he wants to do that, he could just go, you know, and, and just break down the rock. So, I'm thinking this is just uh, for safety and um, to maybe, you know, scout out whether or not his opponent took any of the hidden bases in the top left and, you know, towards the middle side of the map. I'm, I'm still really worried for Yona. I like oh, this. I yeah, like this is bases. I think this is something that Yona needs to do. Because right now the Oats Roach Army's size is equal, but Namshar has such an upgrade advantage. Yona really cannot fight here, at least until he has plus one. He needs to watch his oh, position so this position carefully. Is huge, yeah. He if may be trying to sneak it to the main base once again. He tried that yesterday as well, did not pay off whatsoever against this exact same opponent as well. And he's not even risking it right now. He knew that that was a mistake yesterday and he mentioned... Oh ah, no, I'm not I sure if that should take this fight. Oh the upgraded find is just massive here for Namshar. The concave doesn't seem to be really favoring any player, but I think there's more roaches here for Yona in this fight. Yeah, there's not enough gas right now for Jona to really follow this up with more roaches. He's got plenty of income, but not enough gas. He's going to be able to get out of here, but that engagement right there was definitely in favor of Namshar. Yeah, and I'm really surprised at this decision. And he did this in the previous series as well. He took a gold base, and then he committed to a fight, but yes. he couldn't win the fight. Well spotted right there. Now, we do see the plus one armor being done as well, so there's only a single upgrade advantage right now for Numshar. And it will, yeah, he will be able to push this back, and a gold base is going to oh, be able but to but he's not it. the only one who's reinforcing here. More Roach is streaming in as well oh for Namshar. It's going to be a very close one. He needs to hold on to this gold base. Currently, there are seven workers there, and that may not sound like a big number, but he will get a massive income. Plus two, plus two is almost about to finish for Namshar. Having this huge of an upgraded oh, advantage. Oh, the dance. It's the dance of the roaches. <laughs> oh, man. He needs to add on spines or something to hold on to this gold base. I really feel that the upgrade disadvantage is just going to be too <laughs> massive. I love watching this. They're just walking back and forth like, you got to fight me. You got to fight. Oh. Oh man, the concave. The concave, the concave definitely in favor right here of Jonah. And he doesn't care, he doesn't really need he's to gonna fight. He's going to shove forward. Oh, he's committing. He's definitely committing. And for some reason, it seems like the number of roads for Jonah is massive. But there's just so too, too many upgrades. Where's the burrow for Jonah? He has burrow, he could use it. Oh, I don't think he really needs it right now. The amount of roaches that he has seem to be superior. However, plus two, plus two has just finished up for Namshar. He will be able to once again get those double upgrades as an advantage. And that gold base is definitely going to end up falling. Yeah, it's going to end up falling. Yona is trying to take another favorable trade, but now he's in a very bad position, actually. Namshar once again shoving forward. Wow. With so many roaches killing off so many of Yona's roaches, the supply difference is massive. Yeah, Namshar actually pushing out beautifully right here, ensuring himself that he's going to get a massive lead after being behind for most of this game. Man, so many of the roaches on Namshar are in injured, but he doesn't really seem to care. He just keeps shoving forward. Now into the natural of Jona, and he's going to snipe the roach. Oh, that is, oh yeah, that is really too bad right there for Jona. GG! So that means that Nubshar is going to end up advancing in this tournament. He's going to go towards the semi-finals where he will be facing off against Red. Going to obviously be a very tough series once again as Zerk vs Zerk as well.
Yeah, well, really well played by both players. You could really tell just how equal they were matched. Uh -huh. When it came out down to stuff like upgrades, which really made such a huge difference in those fights, uh, which allowed Namsar, I really feel, to, you know, to conclude the series. Yona definitely had the advantage early on, but in the late game, when they were both maxed, he mm -hmm. just couldn't, uh, and yeah, he could, couldn't go toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Unfortunately, right there for Jona, he will be out of the tournament. Very well played, though. Very close series right there. And uh, definitely looked a lot better than it did yesterday. Yep. Well, I think we're uh, almost just about ready to go into a winner's interview here with Namshar. Let's, uh, let's see what's up. Sound? Namshar! Give it up for Namshar one more time, guys! <laughs> Congratulations for advancing into the semi-finals. Well, um, first of all, it was, um, it was an interesting series. Yeah. You beat him 2-0 yesterday. Yeah. Um, did you have any adaptations in your, in your uh, play style? Um, no. Uh, I, I felt I practiced the style that I've been playing uh, very much like very much the same opener uh, a lot of the time in practice recently. So I just kind of went with what I practiced. And I felt like maybe in this series, I started to become a bit predictable because I used pretty much the same openers as I did uh, when I beat him 2-0, and in the first game that kind of showed, I guess, I made some uh, critical mistakes as well, but I think he adapted well to what I was doing in this series and the last one. So then I was getting a bit worried um, that I was too predictable, but I just uh, stuck to the game plan, because uh, from yeah, what I've gathered from experience so far, it's usually the best thing to do. So I just went with what I practiced, and uh, thankfully it worked out still. Okay. now. Talking about practicing, um, you've been practicing a lot. You've been preparing for the next WCS series. Um, you've been a full-time player for about two years now. And I've had a little chat with the audience. And what they've wanted to know is, what is it like? What are your days filled with as a StarCraft to full-time player? Mm. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> obviously, it's a, a dream job. I'm not sure I can call it a job yet, because obviously, I don't, I don't make um, as much money as someone who had a full-time job uh, would make, but uh, it's uh, a dream I'm trying to make come true. So every day, I mean, I'm just trying to play a lot of StarCraft, and some days, some days obviously it can be tough, because it's not always that you really, really want to play, but you know that you have to to keep improving and get to the level where you need to be to, to be able to make a living off of it. So I'm just playing to, trying to play as much StarCraft as I can, and of course watch a lot of StarCraft, watch a lot of tournaments and um, just try to stay healthy, try, try to relatively <laughs> stay in shape at least and um, yeah, just do different things to try and um, uh, be able to practice as much as possible. Okay, um, now the semi-finals, you're playing against Rhett, are you ready for him? <laughs> I'm definitely ready, uh, I know uh, Rhett is a very strong opponent, he's showed some really strong results recently but I'm confident in my CVC and uh, I'm confident uh, in my ability to beat uh, any opponent in Europe really. So I know that I can win and I know it will be hard, but it's going to be a lot of fun and I'm looking forward to it. Okay, well, congratulations once again and good luck in your future games. Uh, well, we have a lot of amazing StarCraft to come, so I'm really excited for it. Let's see what happens.
Hello everyone, welcome back to Amsterdam. Today we are going to be casting some more StarCraft 2 for you. I'm joined here by Wardy. How are you doing? Good, how are you? I'm doing very good myself as well. Next series that we actually got, uh, got going on here is going to be a very good one. I just think that the hype has been building, not just this morning, but yesterday as well. Everyone's been waiting to see if Guru is going to make the semi-finals. I yeah. think it's, it's all about Guru, right crowd? <laughs> ooh, ooh, that was a good one. All right, so this uh, this is gonna be a decider match right here between Guru and Space Marine. Basically, they are deciding who is gonna go up against Euthermal in the semifinals. It's gonna be a very tricky one, obviously, to win. Yeah, I mean, whoever goes into that semifinal is gonna have a tough match ahead of them. I mean, Euthermal playing fantastically right now. Uh -huh. It's gonna be a really tough game. I think again, he's gonna be one of the favorites to go to the finals and you know to probably win the whole thing as well. So it's it's going to be a tough match. It's going to be a tough semi tough semi final, but they don't have to think about that right now. Right now they have to uh -huh. get there. Um, and both of these guys, I mean, a lot of people are saying it could go either way. I know Guru is going to win, but, <laughs> but <laughs> I was just going to ask. Like I was going to ask predictions. You know, I had already had it in mind before not what he set down. It. But I mean, he he created a little something as well. I mean, you basically have the option right here when you enter the venue. By the way, you can still come over, uh, but you have the option to create your own little cheerful right here. I was going to ask, you know. Who's Wardy cheering for? It looks like <laughs> I pray for Guru every, every night. night. P.S. Marry me. What does it say in the corner? It's uh, all Zerg now. We, we don't read the corners. Oh, we don't read the corners. <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't read <laughs> we them. Just th this is our belief now, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> so, I guru! would, I would say you're cheering for Guru. <laughs> I'm cheering for Guru. Um, um, yeah, what's your prediction? Are you going to go against uh, everyone in the room? Um, I am actually very impressed by Guru's play yesterday. We saw him go up yesterday. Um, I forgot the name for a second about the Terran player that we saw, but he absolutely demolished him. Obviously, we saw him go up against the uh, Zerg player, no matter the name of Liquid Red as well. Red said he has been watching Guru's live stream a lot, so he knew exactly how to pick him apart. Um, but Guru is one of these guys that plays a lot of games. I've been talking to the players, and they've been watching his match history. You can go up to Battle.net, check his match history as well. He plays about 40 games every single day. Apparently yesterday he took a bus ride from Poland, where he's from, for about 18 hours in order to get over here. And he sat down, started playing video games, and basically won. He's Guru. <laughs> <laughs> what more can you say? It's this pretty guy, insane. This guy has passion. I'll be honest, I've never really heard too much about Guru before. That's, that's the magic of it, right? Because no mm -hmm. one has really heard of Guru. He's this guy who comes on ladder, he plays maybe at the odd clan war as well for his team. Yeah. But he just, the, the last few weeks he's just got better and better and better. And now he's actually here at a live event in front of everyone, and he's actually kind of making things work. I mean, he's he yesterday he played fantastically, and mm -hmm. again, he looked as though he was a contender. Yeah, for sure. So obviously, we don't want to, you know, we don't want to hype him up too much because his opponent is not going to be an easy one either. It's going to be a Protoss player known by the name of Space Marine. I know you casted a very sick series of him yesterday. Could you tell us something about that one? Yeah, he played against Optimus in that uh, mm -hmm. losers match yesterday to stay in the tournament and get the chance to play today, and he played one heck of a series. They were games which were not very, you know, it wasn't just straight up, I'm going to do my build and win no, the game. No, exactly. It was, he was being pushed to the limit. He was all over the map trying to defend Optimus's drops, and he dealt with it very well. And we saw two very, very good games and long games as well. Games are really difficult to keep your head in for the entire time. So, I mean, this guy is not someone you can throw away lightly either. I mean, he has got that potential to... For sure. For sure. Put a fight. Yeah, obviously this is going to be a different matchup though. Yesterday was a Protoss versus Terran, and he, I don't think he actually... Did he um, play against the Zerg before? Oh, well, his first match was against... Rett. Mm. He, he took... Yeah, you know, oh he, yeah, yeah. he should have 2 0 Rett, but he didn't look at his mini-map when Roaches ran past his pylon for Fair, fair enough seconds. right there. Yeah, it's going to be a Zerg versus Protoss um, right now. Uh, we are just waiting for the players to get ready to actually set up. They basically are, uh, you know, making sure that their keyboard settings are correct, that the hotkeys are set up correctly, and... You know, basically just be comfortable in the chair. You can see them, uh, you know, <laughs> Space Marine not looking too interested right there. But they're just making sure that they are ready and good to go. Yeah, they're just going to get their vetoes done as well. And we'll see what maps they're going to be playing on here. Not really expecting anything too crazy. I mean, w we did see, it was Red Space Marine that was that crazy series yesterday, right? Mm -hmm. It was, yes. um, every single game was just ridiculous. So... A lot of that was Rhett's doing, you know, he was, it was Rhett making these weird decisions, making, you know, saying, okay, I'm going to proxy uh -huh. hatch you and whatever. So it's going to be interesting to see whether that continues here. Um, if Guru maybe makes things a little bit interesting or if he's just going to sit back and macro a bit more. And we'll see what Space Marine wants to do as well. Um, 
a lot of different options as a prospect. You know, you can open a lot of different ways. You choose, you go gate, you go forge. And from there, you've got so many different options as well. Do you play two base? Do you play three base? So I think it's going to be Space Marine really dictating the pace of this game, but I uh -huh. think Guru could do a little something. Yeah, and that's definitely sort of Guru's playstyle as well. What we saw yesterday is that Guru just plays a style that's pretty much safe against everything. I mean, he just made sure that that Roach Worm was down in time, even if he wasn't planning on making any Roaches. And he's just making sure that he's safe all round. And obviously, that's also a little bit of a downfall of someone who plays a lot of ladder games. You become relatively predictable. Um, obviously, he's simply banking on the fact that his mechanics and his straight-up macro and the fact that he never misses Queen Injects or, you know, always spreads his creep are going to carry him through. But it does, you know, give a couple of, um, a couple of pretty cheesy options that the Protoss could be going for. Yeah, I, I mean, again, there's so many different options for Space yeah. Marine. I, I do wonder if Guru maybe throws something in here. Yeah, I mean, what could it's, he do? It's the decider <laughs> match. He could, pro you know, he could proxy hatch or something. Mm -hmm. He's already vetoed Varney though, um, which is means we're not going to see that, um, you know, any gold base action. I guess we could see um, <laughs> expedition loss maybe, but maybe, yeah. Uh, again, it kind of comes down to the veto, so it'll be kind of interesting to see. What Coda, we Coda, have. Echo, and uh, <laughs> Expedition Lost. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> does seem to be the most cool. <laughs> Three maps, cool. Let's go. <laughs> um, obviously, uh, the semi-finals that we will be casting after this are going to be uh, best of five, and if I'm not mistaken, the finals are going to be best of seven. Yes, they are. So lots of awesome Starcraft still to come your way from the DSL. This DSCR. is still going to be a best of three, by the way. Yes, this uh, is best of three, somewhere. just like that last series. So the winner of this one will be facing off against Euthermal. I would probably say that is the hardest opponent in this entire tournament. You think? Um, I think yeah. Rhett's on form as well, man. Yeah, that's true. That's do, you think, true. do you think Namshaw can put up a fight against Rhett? Um, <laughs> traditionally speaking, Rhett's Zerk versus Zerk is insane. He's very, very good at the matchup. And I would say, if you would compare Jonah to Rhett, I would definitely give Rhett the upper hand. Um, so I think... Red versus Namshaw is going to be a good series, but I wouldn't be surprised if. Uh, I if think Red's seen so point. much of Namshaw's ZVZ yeah, now as well. Yeah, that's the thing, well, right? He's he knows yeah, exactly he what he does. Yeah, and in a best of five as well, I think it's going to be really tough for Namshaw. I think you can maybe take him up, but mm. we'll see. The series. Mm. Anyways, we are just waiting for both of the players to be done setting up right now. It's going to take a little bit of time. They're busy vetoing the maps and you know just making sure that all the settings are correct. Uh, but as soon as we get the lobby invite, we will obviously accept it and jump straight into the game. Yeah, ho hopefully. 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 That's what we're hoping for. Uh, so far, this tournament has been going relatively uh, relatively smooth, except for the yeah. fact that we had no cameras yesterday, <laughs> at least for like, the early part of it. But I got my lobby invite. So yeah. for anyone wondering, <laughs> a little bit of a story. Basically, yesterday, uh, we came here to the venue, and it turns out the um, cameras were actually locked behind this door. Turns out the door had to be taken out. T taken out quite literally, <laughs> with a crowbar. With a crowbar. Smashed down. And brute force. It prevailed, but <laughs> we're in our lobby, so I think <laughs> we might have players ready to go in a couple of moments. We're just double checking, making sure they're ready, and hopefully we're going to get into this. Expedition lost as the first map for this best of three. Yeah, we haven't actually seen that yet as a first map, if I'm not mistaken. That's a yeah, pretty interesting it's one. Yeah, it, it is an interesting first map. In fact, I think a lot of people would say that Expedition lost is probably a fairly nice Zerg map. There's a lot of, um, you know, the four bases are easy to get up to there. There's like gold base you can play around with as well if you would like to early on. The back rocks are very effective for Zerg as well, although the Protoss can definitely abuse that too. So it's a very it's a very interesting map. Lots of attack paths as well, so then Lingering Vi is going to be something Space Marine has to stay on top of. We're just waiting for Space Marine to ready up, and there it is. So we're ready to go Ooh. into our game. Let's see who I'm waiting for the beeps. I love the make. beeps. Yeah, oh, there we go. There we go. <laughs> 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 I do land soon, and I was like, beep, 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 beep. Whenever you try and count down with them, it doesn't work. No, it you doesn't. You always miss. Yeah. <laughs> So here we go, guys. It's going to be none other than Guru. The one and only. Woo! I, I'm actually turning out to be a little bit of a Guru fanboy. I love the way he just brute forced his way through yesterday. It was awesome. Yeah, man. He has a... He, again, he has, he's just... Oh, yes! <laughs> <laughs> Guru has won already. <laughs> All right, all right, wow. all right. We'll have to remake that one. The there's gotta, there's gotta be like one nerd right now in the chat that's like, "That is ridiculous. <laughs> there was nothing even happening in that game." Yet. That was, <laughs> that was a, that was, that was impressive. We're not gonna play on expedition. Oh, lost. that's the problem right there. You, okay, you fair call, enough. You called it out. You said, "Yeah, I've seen this all weekend." I should have just not said a map. word. Uh, so we're going into Iron Fortress. <laughs> Iron Fortress. Wow. Which is an interesting map. This is the map that Space Marine kind of rushed route on yesterday, and honestly, Ooh, right, right, he right. That was the he game. He, his hand. Yeah, he should have won that game though, um, and he didn't, which was like his own mistake. It was a, it was a bit of a bad mistake. Yeah, no. basically, what happened in that game was that Red went for the hatchery first. He managed to successfully counter rush that. 
Red decided to follow it up with a lot of roaches. He made them, and he basically snuck past the pile. And while Space Marine did have vision of it, he didn't notice, and he just simply died. We can stop talking about that, because I think yeah. we're going back to Expedition Lost. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll see. Oh, I'm the only one in the lobby. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be a lonely game. A lonely, it's be a lonely game. Right? Add a couple of AI, <laughs> see if you can see what happens. Half an hour later, that someone's made a base. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we can, are. You can add uh, like elite AIs or whatnot. <laughs> <laughs> they I cheat, apparently. I, I, um, I remember when I was observing at Gfinity and like in the rehearsals, we just set up a match between the AI to like cut to. And it was like this really epic 45 <laughs> minute long game where like the, both the AIs like raven rush each other and you know, like there's two ravens fighting each other. It was incredible. I think that's the first time I've heard the combination raven rush. I mean, it <laughs> 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 take a little while to actually get it. I mean, I guess you can sometimes raven rush in TVT, but no one really calls it that, do they? <laughs> so. No, no. They, they, they call it marine into raven or something. Sort of like yeah. That. Well, it's, it's just like a raven opening. It's not, it's not really a rush, I guess, because you don't really use it aggressively. So if you could have a quick look at the brackets in the meantime, that would be awesome. So yeah, we something to talk about. about that'd be, uh, that'd be what cool. is going on. As we try for like the 10th time to get into this game. Well yeah. the I guess the third time. Third time lucky. So but the last players that are available in this tournament right now are going to be U Thermal and Red. And obviously Nomsha just qualifying for that as well. Um, and then the last two players will be um, Guru and Space Marine. Yeah, one of these guys is going to drop out. Make top six, which is... It's just, I mean, you've got to remember these guys came through qualifiers. You know, they, they didn't just come as eight players. Yet, obviously, they came to eight players as an offline event, but yeah. they qualified through the qualifiers. They came through the round of 16 as well. So they've come a long way already. So dropping out at top six isn't no. you know, bad, but again, I'm pretty sure all of them would like to go to the semis, play their best of five. Always fun. Yeah. That's where the, the, real, uh, you know, the real macro players start shining, usually. <laughs> we were right there warming up his wrist a well, little bit. Well, not if you know if you're a pros play. I mean, you've you've got five best all ins you can throw, right? Maybe, probably. Far enough, far enough. Pro probably. I was trying to stay unbiased here. <laughs> I can hear oh. a little bit of parent bias oh. shining through here. No, you you can't go an entire cast without hitting on pros a little bit, <laughs> right? All right, fair enough, fair enough. I thought we see Space Marine is all ready to, you know, he seems to be ready to good. Yeah, to go. He's about to play Terran, so maybe he's having a pro us too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> about changing just on the DVC. Okay, there he is. I think we're ready to go into Expedition Lost for our first game of this best of three. Finally, we're set. Let's go. There we go, guys. And there's the beeps that you <laughs> love so much. <laughs> I still wish it was only three, but fair enough. We get ten of them. It is. Ten's a long countdown, right? Yeah, like it's like compared to if, if I was a competitive player, right, and I would hear those beeps, I would be terrified every single time. <laughs> it's like the, the worst ten seconds of my life right here. <laughs> countdown to your doom. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's see if we can actually get into the game. Uh, it looks Ooh. as though we've survived the first two seconds. Yeah, do you want to introduce nice. the first player, sir? I would absolutely love to, because I've just realized who it is. <laughs> Guys. I want to hear everyone go crazy because in the upper right hand corner, it's none other than the green Zerg player from Team Extreme Supremacy. It's Guru. <laughs> <laughs> and his opponent for this match, it is going to be the red Protoss player right here. He's currently team uh, teamless, so if there's any, you know, any team uh, managers watching this, <laughs> you actually could snatch up a very good player right, right here. But it's going to be none other than Space Marine. So, I think Space Marine is going to open with a forge here. He's put that pile on yep. the low ground and already sending that very early uh, probe across the map. So, going to be interesting to see what exactly he hopes to achieve with this. Um, I mean, the forge not going to come down just yet, but again, that probe coming across. It's something that Guru will see. He's always going to be forced into a pool first, though, because... Uh, uh, Guru will pool first out of every game. Yeah. I have, I've not seen very much ZVP of him, but I can guarantee you, as a lighter player, he will go pool first every game. Safe guy. He knows he's, how he's to the not safest, die. He's the safest player here. <laughs> Fair enough. I mean, th that's the thing though with Zerg, as long as you you know get into that mid game, a lot of players will feel comfortable there. So uh -huh. you know, go pool first, skip that slight hatch first advantage, but uh, you know stay yeah. safe, stay alive. There's so neither pool. neither of these players really strike me as a cheesy type. They seem to both favor the macro oriented play, and yeah, we see that exact thing going down right now as well. Well, there is a forge going down, and it may indicate counter rush, but I mean it's not really going to happen right now. He's going to simply follow this up with a nexus, make sure he gets that gateway and the cannon going as well. And he's going to be safe and sound for like the next six or so minutes. Guru's going to take a gold base right in the middle of the map. Wow. He's just going to go for it. So Whoa, he's actually mixing it up. Yeah. This That's is probably on Guru. <laughs> and the thing is, I love when Zerg players do this because it's actually so, so difficult. Ooh, Although, I mean, yeah, Space Marine comes to the middle of the map. 
So this is a probe. He's you know he's still got a probe in the main base. I don't think Guru's really going to realize okay. this. And Ooh, he was screen. thinking about counter rushing right there, but he decides to mm. go back home. Yeah, this is kind of interesting. He he changed his mind. Um, I guess he just figured it wasn't worth it. The thing is, it's very hard to punish this uh, gold base, so um, uh -huh. it's going to be interesting to see how Space Marine deals with it. And I think a lot of pros players nowadays they don't try to punish it anymore. They just accept it's going to be there, and that that Zerg's going to get. I think it's something like a five percent increase to your economy over time. Yeah. So they just accept it and they play against it. They just say, okay, cool. We can't do anything about it. I mean. There are some positives to it for the pros, like that base will mine out a bit faster, so he has to kind of expand, but of course there's so many more positives from the Zerg, the creep, the income. Interesting. I would have imagined he would have gone for the cannon rush. Like, honestly, he had two probes ready to go, right? He had one that was still scouting around, and one that he specifically pushed towards the middle side of the map to figure out whether or not that base was going up. And obviously, you have some very nice little patches behind that gold base to actually put up cannons as well. But uh, and I mean, the drones are so far away, it's yeah. they're not going to get there in time to take it down. It's an interesting decision as to you know, why he decided not to go for it there. Oh so. man, the queen is going to make the journey. It's going to you know, take about two and a half minutes, but eventually it will get towards that gold base and start injecting. It sets out on its pilgrimage across the map. <laughs> 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 it's a journey every queen must make once in its life. <laughs> You get past the natural, <laughs> you go past the, uh, the, the rock tower. You know, in s in sometimes in ZVZ, you know, you get out to like, you know, a few steps outside the natural to kill an overlord, but no, this Ooh, queen's right. going all the way to the center. It's got a story to tell. It's going it's to spread its religion, man. It's going to put down that creep tumor. Exactly. So in the meantime, we see Space Marine following this up with four probes and gas right here. So nothing, uh, nothing too scary right there. He's slowly but surely rallying more workers into the assimilators. And he's just making sure that he will get the, uh, you know, the economy that he wants. Basically what he's saying with going for this strategy is that he's not going to move out with anything more than maybe a couple of zealots and a stalker early on. We do see the proxy, or actually that's not a proxy, but we see an extra pylon go down right there in the main base. And obviously he could be hiding any kind of tech. He has the option to go for robotics, he could go for a stargate, even more gateway focus. And we'll just have to wait and see what exactly happens. Now important to note is that the overload of Guru is not in position for this yet. He is rallying the one from the middle side of the map right now, and he eventually will get there. But I think it's going to be a little late. Yeah, I don't think he's really going to be able to scout this. Um, I mean, the angle he's going to come in at is wow. probably the best possible angle. Twilight Council. Yeah, Twilight Council going down. And this is a very early Twilight. You know, this isn't... Uh, well, actually, he's got, I mean, he's got a forge down, but he hasn't started plus one or anything. So it's going to be a very fast blink or dark shrine. So this isn't yeah. kind of... You know, this isn't, oh, I'm going to go to free base with blink and plus two. Uh -huh. But he has a robot facility as well, so I wonder if this is going to be a Ooh. wall prism with Dark Shrine. He puts this right in vision right here of Guru, though. Mm, so it's yeah. a little cheeky. He puts this right in the vision of Guru's overlord, and he knew that that overlord was seeing it right there. So I'm a little curious why he's making that robotics facility. Um, yesterday, he seemed to be favoring Blink. Um, so we'll see if that comes into play as well. But in the meantime, on the Zerg side of the map, we see him just play a super safe game, exactly like we imagined. Is that the queen from the... No, okay, well, I was going to say, there's a couple queens moving backwards right now as well, trying to get towards the natural. But we see him get the Roach Warren, we see him get the Lair. He's gotten the, evo or the Evolution Chamber going up right now as well. And we actually do end up seeing the Dark Trine. Over to the right-hand side of the map, um, there's actually a pylon up for Space Marines. That's going to be very useful Ooh. for, um, you know, the DTs to warp in from. Does this work against a player like Guru, though? I, I think it might. I mean, his Lair is... Oh, he has already has oh a Lair. Oh, he already has yeah. a Lair. Okay, this is a little bit troublesome. I don't think he's going to do too much. Obviously, going for the Dark Shrine is a massive commitment. I mean, he's basically saying, hey, i got to do damage with this or I'm going to be behind. Yeah, he, I mean, he's getting that Warp Prism, so he's going to be able to kind of warp into the main and stuff, and obviously he's going to try and just Ooh. be aggressive all over the map and just kind of cut, you know, pull Guru out of position. But, I mean, Guru's going to have such good warning of anything coming his way because, again, that creep spread is all the way through the middle. Um, you right. know, he's, he's got great vision on the map, oh so this is going to be very, very difficult. Guru spotting the probe right there, moving out towards the third base. He's going to be starting up that third nexus very shortly. Um, so he's basically banking on the fact that his opponent doesn't have a lair done yet, or at the very least doesn't realize that there's going to be, you know, this, uh, this aggression coming his way. And he's going to be making a third base behind it, and then probably follow it up with something like Colossus. Space Marine is going to catch his uh, first sight of roaches now, and he's actually going to intercept a couple of zealots here. So this is... Uh, that's pretty nice. Um, that observer didn't go across to the main, so he doesn't know about the upgrades coming in about you know, no, for the roaches. No, obviously, on the map, though, and we see the first Dark Templars moving from the east side of the map. Yeah, this is going to catch Guru off guard. Right, is he going to see this? Is he going to spot this little blur? Uh, it's, it's such a weird place to be looking, right? Yeah. You know, it's the last place you would expect to see, and he's pulling his units back to the main to deal with the incoming war prism, so Ooh, he's completely out of position. Smart but little play here. Oh, the actually, DTs, the Dark Templars! They're chasing Woo! the wrong thing, but the spores are now on the way, so he's starting to figure out that something might be a bit of an issue here, but it's a little bit too late. This gold base is going to get annihilated. Wow, very d well done right here. Skipping out that um, 
that Overseer turns out to be a pretty big deal. He may even get a kill right here on the base. Now, in the meantime, we see the warp in, in the main base, where we could potentially see the warp in. Uh, but he's really not committing to this too much. Yeah, this, um, but at the same time, actually the back rocks got taken down by a bunch of roaches, and they're in the center of the main of um, Guru. So Guru is taking a lot of damage, but he has a, uh, sorry, yeah, Space Marine is taking a lot of damage from Guru. But he has a couple of Immortals out, and this will be able to turn these roaches away, because Immortals are pretty effective. He's also got DT in here, as there's also DTs Ooh. all over the map. He may actually have enough, though, to at the very least like, pick up one of the Immortals. Now, it looks like it's going to be slightly too much. Yeah, it's, it's going to get cleaned up, and um, again, still in the middle of the map. DT's chasing around all over this place, and uh, just... Grabbing wow. a bunch of work. How many work is he? He didn't even kill. Okay, he killed 11. That's that's all right, but still, it's a fairly big commitment. You know, this wasn't just a couple of. Um, you know, it wasn't just one yeah, DT. It was a, it was a fair true. few. So, um, and it was, you know, a commitment to a warp prism as well. But he does have these couple of immortals out, and I wonder if there's attack across the map. I mean, he oh does, God, he does have go. plus one, so... Denying that third base of the Protoss player is huge. There's an overlord basically just putting creep on that third base, and he's gonna have to hold on right now to this massive aggression of the Protoss. I mean, what is, what is Space Marine gonna follow this up with? That is always the question you wanna ask yourself. He's trying to boosting out another immortal. He's going up to four right now, hoping that his opponent is not gonna get any Hydras or Zerklings. I mean... This is scary. Is as long as Guru responds properly, this is this is gonna be a clean. He's game. even timed on blinks. I mean, this oh is gonna God. be like a really late timing. Oh, the sandwich though. This is really scary right here. Obviously, he does have uh, following claws as well done, so he will be able to move these roaches on the ground. But he is committed right now. The roaches uh, are going for the map. Call. This is actually really good for Guru because I mean, yes. he's. I, I thought he was going to take down the road, but he's actually just going to get worker damage done. He can go into the main. The sentries on into the, the force field, so. You know, what wow. looks amazing for Mr. Reef's space thing is actually turned into a disaster for him. so much fun with this as well. That is the most important part. He doesn't even really need these roaches. He might yeah. actually get the Nexus. That would be enormous. Yeah, again, the Nexus would be huge. In the middle of the map, we have GT and Zara uh, heading towards that build base once again. And uh, just action everywhere. The roaches in the natural still picking off workers. And, I mean, uh, the Dark Templar is right yeah. now in the gold, though. They are doing a lot of damage, hitting out so many worker kills. And he's actually focus firing, or focus firing down the hatchery. Wow, 10 workers killed, and uh, DT is going to stay alive as well, so that's very important. Being able to keep this alive means they can move in again later. You don't have to commit more resources that's to that further harassment. Game. And this is this is really scrappy. I mean, players are losing stuff all over the map, but I, I worry a bit for Space Marine because he's still stuck on these two bases. Yeah. Guru is still effectively mining a little bit from this gold base. So it's really important for these DTs to keep coming back in, and they're on the way back in now. At least a few yeah. more workers going to fall in the middle. Looks like Space Marine is not going to go all in right here. Or at the very least, he's trying his very hardest to make sure well, there's more and more damage being done right there by the Dark Tempers. Looks like they are finally getting cleaned up right there. But he even pulled the drones out of the gas, guys. Just in the natural. He's right now only putting them back in. So he's definitely not going 100% all in with this. But yeah, it's, it's an interesting one. I mean, he still does not have a third base. Yeah, and that's that's the real problem. He's got power over done here. I mean, he can slowly maybe move towards. They might even take kind of the forward third base, but it's it's oh kind of tough. Where do you actually go? He's just gonna is he just gonna move out and fight? I I can't decide what no. he's actually gonna end up doing. Look at the supply counts right now. This fight, if they if they basically meet head on, is gonna go easily in There's favor. I mean, with Hydra's in the army as well. I mean, yeah. look at this. He's coming up to the third. He's like, oh, you still don't have a third base? Like he just, I, he probably he's probably thinking himself he like counter attack. Uh, I guess he could. He's actually gonna get a bit Ooh, of concrete on the low ground though. though. Yeah, this is this is a fight which he shouldn't really take just oh, yet. Oh, one immortal, immortal going down immediately. Second wow. immortal going down as well. Yeah, the rest of the units coming oh in from behind God. really going to help this out as well and just make oh, it that little bit better. Immortal. Losing the immortals just takes out so much of the power of this, and all of a sudden Space Marine just yeah. has absolutely nothing. Guru is just going to keep on moving forward. There's no sentry to actually block out these units from just moving up that ramp. Uh -huh. um, I guess Guru doesn't really know that, so he's going to be a little bit cautious and not move in for the kill just yet, playing a little bit patiently here. Which is fine. I mean, no fed base for the pros. You can take as long as you like. War prison back on the way. Uh, on the way back. Oh, the, the queens! So many queens. <laughs> the queens are ready to kill that war prison, and war wow. prison immediately falls in the Zerg main base. Yeah, that um, Zerg. I mean, moving forward, here, and this is uh, it, it's no know. more energy on those uh, yeah. sentries. I mean, there's no guardian shield up, and that is huge. And GG is cold. Guru is uh, going huge here, man. He's uh, he wins the first game. Very impressive. I mean. A very scrappy game, very different, a bit yeah. of a weird build from Space Marine, you know, Dark Templars. I feel as though he did enough with the DTs, but he went for kind of the all-in follow-up, yet somehow Guru still found a way to do damage to him. And if you're going for an all-in, the last thing you want... Past, like yeah, crazy. like the last thing you want to do, if you're, you're all-inning, you don't want to take damage. That's not how it works. You're meant to have the biggest army. You're not meant to be out of position or anything. You're meant to... You know, it, it was great play by Guru. It slows down the all-in. It stops the attack coming too early. It gives him time to get them Hydras out. And 
you know, once the Hydras were in, we saw every single fight completely in Guru's favor. Definitely, definitely. Very clean victory right there by Guru. Going for a bit of a risk. Uh, Space Marine deciding not to go for that, uh, that cannon rush. I think that, I'm pretty sure that would have still been a very good decision I, in that one You know, because well, I don't see how he saves the hatchery at all. No. You know, I don't think he can save the hatchery if he puts two cannons down. Okay. And I get the only thing I can think of is, but, but th at the same time as well, I think he wouldn't see the cannons until the hatchery finished. So to me, it seems like a worthwhile investment for Space Marine. Um, well, really like make one cannon. I think that would have been worth it. Yeah, Either way, exactly. though, it doesn't really matter too much. Looks yeah. like we are ready to jump into game number two right here. Players are saying they are ready. And, um, well, as they are ready, we are ready as well. It's going to be on Iron Fortress. So this time around, we are actually, <laughs> we yeah. actually correct. So, so now, now we can talk a bit about Iron Fortress. So this is the map where Space Marine did actually cannon rush. Mm -hmm. um, but whether you'll do it again when Ooh. Guru probably saw that game, it's um no. is, is Guru gonna open up hatchery first? I mean Yeah, I yeah, that's the thing. I think he just plays a little bit too safe for that to really happen. So I think Space Marine might open with a forge again. Uh -huh. And just look for the opportunity because open with a forge isn't the end of the game and if you have forge based build they can actually work out very well. So there is that possibility as we load on up and get ready to take this away. <laughs> I'll let you do the honors. It's oh only fair yes. to share oh. a little bit of this guy. In the top left corner of this map, the man that is currently 1-0 up against his Protoss opponent it is going to be from Team Extreme Supremacy, none other than Guru. <laughs> he sees the cameraman in his face, he's like, yep, I'm gonna smile. He's, <laughs> he's like, I'm right, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> Down yep. in the bottom left hand corner, I mean, I don't know what this guy must be feeling because he's up against a god. But nonetheless, in the teal, it's Space Marine. I'm excited for this game. Space Marine obviously has something planned for this map. Normally, you see Protoss players vetoing this one out because the third base is very, very difficult to take. Now, yesterday, he played against this, um, all this exact same map against Red, like we already mentioned. He decided to go for the cannon rush, and obviously, Guru saw that, if he wasn't busy laddering, that is. Yeah. Um, <laughs> That's I mean actually a very good assumption he, he to make. He was just though. talking to Red for a long time before this game, so I wonder if he might have just asked about Space Marine and what uh -huh. he sort of did as well. Um, he's just going to pat down the pool first, so he's not going to take any risk here. And no. on, uh, I mean, no probe out on the map early here for Space Marine means he's, you know, he's not going to put a forge down or anything. You know, he's not looking to scout and see what's going on. He's actually going to go Nexus first. So I'm wow. um, going to take a little bit of a risk, and it's going to pay off for him. Yeah, fair, fair assumption right here to make. I mean, is Guru really going to tent pull you on the map that is four players? I mean, <laughs> very, very unlikely. Going for the pile on the main base. So, you know, he, he does have something to, uh, to fall back on right now. Going for the gateway after getting the Nexus as well. So this is actually pretty much the greatest you can get as a Protoss player. Meanwhile, though, you do some simply see the uh, spawning pool into the hatchery right now for Guru. Yeah, and uh, Space Marine is going to send the probe in the correct direction to scout here initially. Um, yeah, I'm very intrigued why he didn't veto this map. I imagine he must have vetoed Inferno Pools and Cactus Valley. Something like that, yeah. Because um, I, 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 I guess, I mean, you've got to let one of these large maps into the map pool. Iron Fortress is quite an interesting one. I guess um, it's a little bit weird, but we'll see how it plays out. And he's got the better spawns for himself here. Cross spawns is uh -huh. definitely going to be worse. Vertical gives him a little bit more pushing potential. Um, so that's something you can definitely maybe take into consideration now that he's found his opponent. Guru heading into an extractor, just going to take up some gas. So, you know, what are the real options here for Guru? How do you think he's going to play out the early stages of this game? I think what Guru is going to do in this game is just play it as safe as humanly possible. That seems to be his thing. That seems to be the style that he enjoys playing. So I'm assuming once he realizes this is such an early nexus as this one is, um, he will just simply take a third base, get that zirkling speed started up, and make sure that he scouts any kind of proxy pylons. And from there on out, he will be able to fly that overload That's into the probe. main base. Yeah, that probe, that <laughs> probe is on a hero. journey, man. It's not quite the queen from the last Whoa. game. She's is it going to make it away? Wow. Come on. Cut. Oh, no. no, dude. You could. Oh, my God. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> he stays alive in the corner. It's actually. Uh, oh, wow. Did yeah. he? Whoa, 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 whoa. Did Guru actually think he killed that? Well, I don't know, because surely he would have seen it leave. Mm. No, surely Guru knows. No, he's no, going to no, move, move back in anyway just now. All right, just fair enough. Check. Anyways, sorry, I interrupted you for a so, so basically what I'm assuming right now, Guru will play safe. He's going to fly in an overload eventually, figure out exactly what the Protoss player is up to, and counter accordingly. Play a full-on macro focus style. That's yeah. what I'm assuming. That's my assumption. <laughs> yeah, it's a pretty safe assumption. 
Yeah, I mean, I'm, I think, again, it's going to be kind of, you know, Space Marine to dictate where this game goes at this point. Uh, he's adding on a couple of gates, which is perfectly normal. He's going to add on the Forge here in a few moments, I imagine. I'd be very surprised if yeah, he didn't. Yeah, we're not seeing that one yet. I actually imagined one of those gates to be a Forge. Yeah, I think getting a couple of gates up is just, uh, it, it just gets you that production. He's actually going to pop down the Stargate, okay. Yep. Um, this is kind of the other way you can Ooh. move towards a third base as a Protoss player, because with the Oracle, you're very safe against Zerglings, and you can put pressure on and scout. And you can also follow with a void wave if you feel like roaches are coming out towards you. So this kind of covers, you know, all the kind of different options of the Zerg yeah. early on and will let you take that third base. So it's actually kind of interesting. Is he going to go straight for the third base right here or is this probably yeah, a journey to get the pile on up? Actually because this also could be like the super early mm. style that we saw at the beginning of Heart of the Swarm where players would instead go for some Maybe Orc went to Void Ray into Gateway Aggression, and he's that was actually relatively common. He's going to walk right underneath an Overlord, though, so Guru's yeah. going to see this coming across the map. He posts the Forge down as well now, so I mean, again, as as he, he is just going to kind of commit to like this being later, uh, kind of a later on thing. Well, Mothership Core just find a way out that uh, almost <laughs> that that <laughs> Yeah, so he is hunting right now. He did definitely spot that probe on the minimap. You can see the Zerkins running across the map, trying to figure out where that probe went, and they're scouting any kind of potential. And the Mothership Core, meanwhile, is chipping away right there at the hatchery. But He's the first Oracle is just about to come out. Then we'll see how much damage he can we do with this. There is no Spore Crawlers yet. Worth noting that uh, Guru did just clean up a probe attempting to make a third base for Space Marines. So Space Marine oh, is nice. thinking of moving towards that third. Just Guru doing a nice job of uh, slowing it down a little bit as this Oracle begins to move across the map. Uh, probe goes, uh, Palm goes down, but I mean... Yeah, well, he's actually going to keep it alive, which yeah. is nice, but I don't really think he's going to commit too much to this. He had the second Oracle, though. Interesting. Yeah, there's no... There's meanwhile a lot of damage being done in the natural right there. Mm. That Oracle is going to town. A lot of the workers end up falling, and he decided not to go for the Spore Crawler just yet, just banking on the qu fact that Queens will be dealing with this just fine. But, yeah, it's exactly worth noting, or, you know, you know that it's worth noting right here that the Oracle... There's a second Oracle in production. Yeah, I, I don't know if it's worthwhile at this point, because... The Spore Crawler's on the way, this first Oracle's quite low, but I mean, he should be able to keep it alive if he just wants to keep it for scouting, which is one of the primary uses of the Oracle. You know, picking off a couple of workers here and there is nice, uh -huh. but the main thing is going to be the information you gather from that. So, yeah, exactly. another probe going to go down at this first base, perhaps it's going to get chased away by these Lings and it will die. Um, and a lot more Lings coming in here, Cannon not ready just yet, only a couple of uh, Zalads which are quite slow, and he's going to lose the Cannon maybe, which will buy you a little bit yeah. more time here, but he's not going to cancel the third or anything. No, the sentries are being warped in right now, a little bit of a risk, he needs to boot down the perfect force, but losing a center right here would be too big of a deal, but he will get rid of those couple of Zerklings, and it looks like we're going to make up for a bit of a macro game right here. Ooh. Now I'm kind of curious, wow, once again the Oracle's moving in towards the third, be Ooh, almost falling right there on one of them. Uh, but I'm kind of curious right now about exactly the plan that Guru has in mind. He ends up going right there for the Hydralis then. It's being built at his own third base. And it looks like he's just adding on the Roach Speed upgrades as well as the Missile upgrades. So maybe something like Roach Hydra Viper? That is something that's very common. I'm actually really interested by what Space Marine's doing. He's going for, he's oh. Chrono Boost now uh, charge before Blink, and Ooh. he's getting plus two as well. And Five this eights. is, I imagine he's going to add on a Templar Archives as well, go for Archons, and kind of like a big charge on Archon attack with plus two. It's been done, it, we, we see it sometimes, it's not the most common build by, by a long way as these things run in, but perfect yeah. force field by Space yeah. Marine. And these Oracles, they just kill these links so fast. This is actually really bad for Guru, he gets nothing done and throws away a lot of his army. Yeah, he does buy a little bit of time with this, so I guess it's not the worst scenario. Obviously, the energy on the Vibe or on the uh, sentries will be gone as well. But there's no proxy pylon anywhere. It looks like he's actually thinking about I moving mean, out with these units, but where's the Mothership Core? Yeah, he, I, think he's I think he's just that confident, but he's got Whoa. these sentries in the middle of the map and there's roaches no, I think here. Was a yeah, this is, this is really bad for him. These roaches have speed, so these sentries should at least throw down <laughs> a force field or two just to try and help themselves that out. That hero probe right there trying to sneak out, and he manages to get through, but. Yeah, he's going to be forced to engage right here, and these, yeah, these roaches are happy. Uh, these, these roaches just keep coming through. These charge offs are just not going to be enough. There's, the oracles are chasing, but they're not that effective against roaches. I mean, yes, they'll kill them, but very, very slowly. Ooh, so man. this is um, kind of troubling for Space Marine that, you know, you see so many roaches. He's going to start walking in a few stalkers to help out, and he's making a void way as well. As yeah, but the Hydras, man, the Hydras are already on the production tab. He's creating them right now, getting the upgrades for him as well. Forcing the Photon Overcharge, gonna be going to the third base, probably try and force the Photon Overcharge right there as well, and just simply keep pushing on. 
Yeah, he's uh, rallying these hydrants across the map, so this becomes very scary for Space Marine. I mean, he's got that plus two, he's got that charge, but he's not really going to hit that aggressive timing I think he was hoping to with Archons, etc. Have Roach Hydra moving up towards the third base once again, and right. this is open. He's going to at least get a cannon here, if not a little bit more. Very yes. good position right now for Guru to be, and he will try his very hardest to clean up this game if he manages to. Nice for an overcharge, obviously. He's going to get he's turned around. A lot. Yeah. These, uh, the Zelts came in from behind, which, and the Hydras were kind of like, in, yeah, you know, they're in the back, so he actually lost a couple of hydras then it's enough to turn him around but i think guru is you know he's picking up enough kills to yeah, make the trades worthwhile he's even bringing drones across the map man yeah he's man <laughs> the bm hatcheries let's go <laughs> i'm pretty sure it's just a mistake <laughs> but you know why not all right at this point nope, they decide to go home instead again uh, yeah. that does tell uh, his opponent that he is making at least a couple of drones that fort base is obviously already finished up for him and he's getting a lot more income because of it <laughs> what he does make hatchery <laughs> <laughs> it's what? right at the middle of the map, like... <laughs> I, I guess he just decides, like, well, you know, at this point, why not? He's actually going to come over here. I'm not sure, I mean, with so many charge shots, maybe Space Marine can hold this on. These, uh, 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 the Void Rays are trying to do the best they can to clean out the Hydras, but, well, they're going to stay alive and they are going to push this back, so Space Marine is hanging on. And Guru, does he really want to keep this hatchery? I mean, it... No, mm. man, he's, he's going to use it for faster reinforcements. <laughs> faster reinforcements, yeah. <laughs> Get the queen, spread some creep, obviously. No, but a lot of Zerklings on the production deck right now as well. He's going to make Hydras and Zerklings. Not tacking up towards the Hive just yet, which is the most surprising thing, I suppose. But no. I think he's smelling blood. He yeah, wants to he, finish off this He game. knows he's got an advantage, and with an advantage, he's he's just going to try and push for the victory, I think. He's saying, why why wait when I can kind of try and push it <laughs> and win now? And he's got a good concave set up, but he's got a few units actually attacking the front door. Uh, this is going to be interesting. He starts collapsing on the army. I don't oh know if he's man. got enough Hydras to deal with the Void Rays, actually. Well, I think there is plenty right now at the very least to deal with the units that are out right now. Yeah. Keep in mind, half of the army is not even in this battle. He's actually attacking the natural at the exact same time as well. More Hydras coming in, making sure that he gets the constant reinforcing Zerg units as well. And GG is cold. Guru moves into the semi-finals for a date with Euphermal. That's going to be a ZVT. Oh, man. That's a tough opponent. Yeah, man, that's um, it's not going to be easy. No. But he has been playing well, and he definitely has that potential. I feel it. Yeah. I believe. Obviously, Space Marine not happy right there with the fact that he's out of the tournament right now. He had a very solid performance, though. Yeah, man. I mean, top six again, coming through them qualifiers, coming through the, um, you know, coming all the way through. Still a decent way. I think the games didn't go how they want, he, how he wanted them to. Though, you know, first game I think the road just getting in. He got a bit distracted, and uh, that didn't go how he wanted. And obviously, game two, I don't think he was, you know, he never got to put into action the plan he had. No, exactly. Now, I think we're going to go into an interview so with, uh, with Guru in a little bit as well. This is going to be a tough one, because Guru's Eng English is not the greatest. Uh, so I'm thinking we're he'll doing a bit of he'll translator he'll into fine. translator, and, you know, we'll see exactly what happens. But I would love to hear his thoughts about this one. Obviously, um, a bit of a newcomer in the StarCraft scene right now, at least, you know, the recent couple of, I would say mostly years. You don't really see very many newcomers in the scene. Um, so to all of a sudden see Guru enter the scene and you know have a dominating like in a dominating fashion, it's very very cool. Yeah, man. And again, he's been uh, he's been killing on the ladder. So um, all right, yeah, we're going to be giving it to over go. to Frank. Cool. Take us away. All right, everybody. Uh, congratulations to Guru and thank you very much, Space Marine, for playing at DSCL. We love having you over. And uh, so Guru will be going to the semi-finals, uh, and we're going to have something that we haven't seen before, an interview with Guru. Like the casters already said, there's a bit of a language barrier. Uh, I joked about it before, so it's more like a language continental divide. Uh, but we're going to bridge it. Uh, so, but before we go into the interview with Guru, I've got good news for someone who just won this uh, HyperX uh, USB drive. It is Namshari's most dedicated fan, uh, Hampus Wieslander. I'm hoping they're saying that right. Uh, at Texas931 on Twitter. Congratulations, you just won it. And for the next contest, it's already up. If you predict, not correctly, but in the most fun way, the winner of the DSL Open 2015, you can win this Cooler Master Octane Gaming Gear set. It's a keyboard and mouse. Uh, it's really cool. So if you go on Twitter and tweet at DSC League and at CMNL, who you think is going to win the DSL Open and why, then the most fun answer will win this set. Uh, the, uh, the winner will actually be drawn before the final start. So it's not about who's right, it's about who's the funniest. All right, so go ahead and do that. Right now we're going to take a really quick break, and after that we'll try and do the most awkward esports interview yet with like three different levels of translators in between. So stay tuned for that. Uh, 
as a viewer, why? So why would you be excited? Well, it's because you're gonna see people from your your hometown, basically, right? Or your your own country play. Uh, you get to see not only their games, which you usually see, but also their faces. So come and watch. The best thing that can happen for us as the Dutch Startup League is for players to get fans. camera woman but uh, I speak from the Ukraine so we're gonna try this out with this whole Eastern European thing see if it's working out so guru um, so I'm um, asking him basically so how do you remember your 18-hour trip my toughest was, uh, my toughest was uh, very tired yeah so did you sleep I trip? sleep for uh, five hours yes ah, Left for five hours. So, jak wspominasz swoja impresja the online games? It it was very pretty games, and I I meet very nice people. Uh huh. So asking. So. <laughs> oh, awesome. Very nice. Awesome. Czy jesteś pewien, że wygrać do Uterna? So basically, if he's confident in winning with Uterna. Fifty fifty. Fifty fifty. Okay. <laughs> Good. Thank you very much. Um, guys, we're going to hear a wonderful presentation from Adam Lobel. So yeah, back to you guys. <laughs>